excerpts from my translation of the Japanese linguistic landscape, Reflections on Quintessential Words, by Nakanishi Susume, published in 2019 by the Japan Library. To purchase the book, click on the link included in the description to this video. Once again, I will read two entries from the book, this time Kaminari and Inazuma. Kaminari, Thunder and Lightning. The sky turns ominously dark. Thunder echoes in the distance. This rumbling sound, or kaminari in Japanese, is said to be caused by a deity, or kamisama. This is the idea behind the origin of the term kaminari, which is written with the Chinese characters kami and nari. Kami is deity, nari is to sound, to make a noise. Those who have done some reading in classical antiquity will know that the pre-modern Japanese feared nothing more than daijing, the thunder deity. It was only after humans became steeped in civilization that they made the sun the king of all deities. The thunder deity was regarded as chief deity not simply because of its power to instill fear through the use of lightning and thunder, however. As is true in so many cases, the value of a thing is dependent on its usefulness to humans. Thus, the deity of thunder and lightning, Kaminari, attained the status of supreme deity on account of its considerable contributions to agricultural production. As I explain in the entry for Inazuma, lightning played a major role in providing bountiful harvests and ensuring fertility for ancient communities. Japanese has, has another word for lightning, Ikazuchi. The word is a combination of two char Chinese characters, ikazu, meaning august or majestic, and chi, meaning spirit or soul. To see the kanji, of course, you need to buy the book. And thus carries the connotation of an august or majestic spirit. Lacking any determinate characteristics, the term referred simply to any kind of majest majestic or uh, august spirit. In short, the word ikazuji connotes the sense of awe that humans felt in the presence of the divine kaminari. Lightning divination, or denko uranai, was a common practice throughout the ancient world. The wide use of lightning in divination rituals testifies to the lightning god Daijin's importance and paramount status among the myriad deities. Lightning divination was used to determine which god was in a state of rage by tracking the lightning's location in the sky. Once people had determined its source, they would give offerings to whichever god had released the lightning in the hope of appeasing it. There is another synonym for kaminari, and that is kamutoke. This term comes from the phenomenon of lightning, the massive cluster of, of divinity called Shintai, that occasionally thunders high in the heavens without revealing itself, instead just releasing occasional shafts of light. At ta times, the divine cluster experiences a dissolution of energy, which results in Kamatoke, literally the dissolution of a deity. And from that heavenly breakdown comes, come bolts of lightning, or Inazuma. Given the many Japanese words for expressing the phenomenon of kaminari, we can see that the pre-modern Japanese possessed a rather sophisticated understanding of what that divine cluster of energy signified. Framed by this group of terms, lightning has long been rev revered as a deity of the firmament, tenjo no kami. In Japan, the deity known as kamo evidently manifests itself as the deity of thunder. Most people today are familiar with the wind god and thunder god screens, Fujin, Daijin, Zu, which were popular during the Edo period. Whichever word we take, Kaminari, Ikazuchi, or Kamatoke, they all echo the religious sense of awe and reverence that our forebears felt for the phenomenon of lightning and thunder. The word Kaminari possesses an uncanny, terrifying resonance, but it also suggests the deep feeling of kinship that we Japanese people have long sustained toward this natural phenomenon. Okay, the next word is Inazuma, bolts of lightning. Everyone knows that Inazuma refers to the fearsome shock of light that flashes through the vast vault of heaven. Very few people, however, have considered why this electric bolt in the sky is called Ina plus Tsuma, literally wife, Tsuma, of rice, Ine, 
or perhaps some have indeed pondered this only to dismiss it as a curious oddity. The fact of the matter, however, is that the term has rather profound implications. To begin with, the tzima of ina tzima refers to husband. Originally, tzima meant not wife as it does today, but rather one's partner. Thus in the past, both husband and wife were called tzima. Furthermore, we know from the records that the tzima of ina tzima meant husband rather than wife. So why do we call lightning the husband of rice, ine? The answer is quite interesting. When a flash of inazima runs through the sky, the nitrogen dissolves in midair and becomes nitrogenous, nitrogenous fertilizer in the ground. In this way, the lightning inseminates the planted rice. Lightning is the husband of rice, as it were. The term inazima appears in the Kokin Wakashi, a collection of poems, ancient and modern compiled around 905 AD. Before that, a similar, more primitive term was used in the Nihon Shoki, the Chronicles of Japan, 720, namely Inatsurubi, which is written with the Chinese characters for lightning and electricity. Inatsurubi is a more direct expression signifying the sexual intercourse that takes place between lightning, dai, and rice, ine. To put it more precisely, the idea behind the term is that the descent of lightning causes the mythical emperor of heaven, or Tente, to copulate with Jiten, the earth goddess. Their union thus bestows agricultural fertility on humankind. There used to be a law forbidding people, even the son of heaven, Tenshi, the emperor, from engaging in sexual activity during a Kaminari thunderstorm. Nevertheless, the Nihon Ryoki, or record of miraculous events in Japan, compiled between 787 and 824, one of Japan's oldest sources, includes a story that describes one case of an emperor breaking this commandment. When a servant inadvertently walks in on the emperor and empress making love during a thunderstorm, the enraged emperor commands the servant to go and seize the lightning and bring it hither at once. Daiyo toraite koi. The location in the city of Asuka, where he managed to catch a lightning bolt, later came to be known as Lightning Hill, Ikazuchi no Oka. What I find astonishing is the preci precision with which the pre-modern Japanese were able to observe nature and respond to its workings accordingly. Inazuma is just one of the many examples of how they understood the natural world, world with such clarity. Modern man, on the other hand, has only recently learned of the connection between lightning and agricultural production through explorations in mushroom cultivation. When it comes to the natural sciences, our predecessors might have had a better grasp of the facts than we do. There may very well be other words that, like Inazuma, reveal pre-modern Japanese people's intuitive understanding of nature. Even natural scientists might benefit from a closer reading of the classics.